Hi everybody. Now we've got the angle and the size of the impulse with which we will uh, push the ball. Next we need to convert this angle and the size to a two-dimensional vector, to a vector with an x component and a y component. So let's get started. We are going to create a function. And we're going to name the function get impulse vector. The function has two inputs, angle and size. Let's first make a plan about what we're going to do. First we're going to convert the angle to radians. And what are radians? Well, it's a long story. Let's just say for now that radians are another way of measuring angles, and I know how to convert between them, and I will let you know how in a moment why radians exist and what exactly they are. Let's leave that for the advanced maths class. If you already know, good for you. If you don't, don't worry, doesn't matter. After that, we want to get the x and y components of the impulse vector. And after that, we want to output the result. So let's see. We want to convert the angle to radians. So the angle is equal to the old angle multiplied by pi divided by 180. This is how to convert an angle from degrees to radians. Notice how I'm expressing the resulting variable in terms of itself. That's okay. That's allowed in coding. In the math class, that is not allowed. Next, let's get the x and the y components. The x components is the size multiplied by the cosine of the angle. And the y component is the size multiplied by the sine of the angle. And that is in the negative direction. So if you don't know how I came up with these, then have a look at my appendix, which explains all about vectors. Oh, I have to add var here, because we are creating new variables named fx and fy. Now we want to create an output variable named out. So we have a var, a variable named out, and it's a vector. And a vector has an x component and a y component. And we want, we want the function to output a variable, we say return and then the variable we want to be the output. So let's recap quickly. We've got a function named get impulse vector. It has two inputs named angle and size, and the output is a vector named out. Okay, now we want to make use of this function. So let's go back to the function, which happens every time we click the shoot button. At the moment, we've set the offset to 0, 0 and the impulse to 100, negative 100. Instead of setting the impulse to 100, negative 100, we want to set the impulse to the result of the function get impulse vector. The inputs are angle and force. Remember that we got the values for angle and force by looking at the slider values. So let's test this. Put the angle at 45 degrees and the force at a hung at maximum. And it works. What about if we put the angle at 90 degrees? Yeah, it goes straight up. Let's see, we need to increase the maximum force. So let's increase the maximum value of this horizontal slider to 500. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Maybe a bit too strong. Let's change it to 300. Better, better. I think that's about right. So thanks for watching. In the next video, we are going to do an exercise. In that exercise, I want you to modify the script to see if you can find a way to detect whether the ball has gone into the hoop or not. So ping it over, try something out. Hopefully you'll be able to solve it. If not, have a look at the solution in the next video.